Moving on in 6.3, starting to apply some of what we just talked about just with the building blocks of some of these special angles. We'll talk about what happens when we start to move out of that first quadrant of our graph. Right? All of the angles we've talked about so far, right? 0, 90, 30, 60, 45, well, they're all kind of stuck in this first quadrant of our graph, right? Between 0 and 90 degrees. Well, we want to know what happens beyond this, right? Because realistically, angles that we deal with in real life are not always acute angles. Um, so we know that the plane is in four quadrants, right? We have quadrant one, we have quadrant two, we have quadrant three, we have quadrant four, and we use these Roman numerals to denote them. Well, what happens in each of these quadrants is in quadrant one, I have acute angles. I'm going to use a different color. Right, these are all acute angles. In quadrant two, these are all obtuse angles. In quadrant three and four, IB kind of groups these together, and we call them all reflex angles. They're just any angle larger than 180, but smaller than 360. So we call these reflex angles. And here's what we notice about angles outside of the first quadrant, is that they can all be connected back to something in that first quadrant, and the only thing that will change is their sign, S-I-G-N, not S-I-N-E. Right? They'll either be positive or negative, depending on where we end up. So let's take a brief look at this. In uh, quadrant one, right? my radius is always one, no matter where I am. And I'm always dealing with positive x values, right? I'm on a positive part of the x-axis and the positive part of the y-axis. So no matter how I form a ratio of my numbers, it's always positive. So one thing we say here is that all of my trig functions are positive. If I move into quadrant two, well, now I'm dealing with negative x values, positive y values, and always a positive radius. So if I were to like draw out my triangle here, right, if this were to be my triangle, well, I have a negative here and a positive here and a positive there, right? So the only time I'm going to have any positive trig values is if I've got these two angles, which are relative to my angle here, the opposite and hypotenuse, which are my sine, uh, which is my sine function. So only sine is positive in quadrant two. And then in quadrant three, we have the same kind of idea, right? I have a negative x value, a negative y value. And it turns out because of that, that my tangent is positive in quadrant three. And again, following that logic, I have a, in uh, quadrant four, I have a positive x-axis a negative y-axis, so the only positive function I have here is cosine. Only cosine is positive. That's a lot of information that I just gave you. There's a simple way to remember it. I have this great mnemonic device, mnemonic device, and that's all students take calculus. All students take calculus. That's the way that we can kind of remember which functions are positive in which quadrant, starting with quadrant one. All, all, students, S for sine, take, T for tangent, calculus, C for cosine. Some people also like to start in quadrant four and they realize that all of the letters form the word cast. Right, so you can also use the word cast if that is helpful to you. Um, as long as you remember to start in quadrant four, whereas this one starts in quadrant one. We're gonna take this and pair it with something I've just started hinting at. All right, I mentioned that all of our angles, no matter which quadrant we're in, connect back to something in quadrant one. 
and we call that a reference angle. IB likes the word associated acute angle. I like reference angle. This is the acute angle, and just to give it a name, I'm going to call it alpha, that the terminal side of an angle makes with the x-axis. So, for example, an angle of 120 degrees is going to start, we always start from zero. We call this the initial side. And we're going to measure counterclockwise to 120 degrees. And that's going to put us here. And we're going to measure it this way, counterclockwise. to our terminal side. Well, the reference angle is the Q angle that the terminal side makes with the x-axis. So I'm talking about the angle from the terminal side down to the x-axis, this one. That is my reference angle. Well, let's think geometry for a minute here. If this angle is 120 degrees then and the distance from the initial side to the other side of the x-axis is 180 degrees then this alpha this reference angle is 60 degrees let me show this again with a different angle so if I show you 330 degrees we're gonna start Again, start at your positive x-axis, and we're going to measure counterclockwise until we get to the terminal side. So here's, here's my theta. Well, my reference angle is basically my way to get back to the x-axis the most quickly. So that's going to be this little piece right here. And if this is 330 degrees, well, how many degrees do I need to get back to the x-axis? Well, 360 degrees will get me all the way back to the x-axis. So the remaining distance I have left is 30 degrees. So my reference angle is 30 degrees. The trick with degrees. You just want your fastest way back to the x-axis you're trying to get to either 180 or 360, essentially, some multiple of 180, whichever is closer. Closer, there we go. With radians, it's the same idea, but just remember that now instead of dealing with 0, 90, 180, and 360, we're dealing with 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. So 5 pi over 4, well, that's, that's more than 1, but it's less than 1 and a half, so it's actually going to put me right about here, this way. My angle goes that way. Well, the fastest way back to the x-axis is to go back up. So if I'm at 5 pi over 4, how far do I need to move to get back to pi? I only need to move pi over 4. So my reference angle is pi over 4. And the trick with radians is so much simpler than the degrees. Yes, you're trying to get back to pi or to 2 pi. Even easier, though, it's always the same denominator every single time. Denominator. Every single time. The reference angle will always have the same denominator and just pi on the top. So right, my reference angle for 5 pi over 4 is just pi over 4. Let's put this into practice. Here's what we're going to do. I want to find the sine of 225, cosine, and tangent, all of 225. There's a two-step process, or a three-step process, I guess. Find the reference angle. Find, in the case of sine or cosine or tangent, we're going to find the trig function at that reference angle or cosine or tangent, depending on the problem I'm dealing with, of course. 
And then I want to adjust the sign S-I-G-N using what we learned about the quadrants, using cast or using all students take calculus. Okay, so let's follow those pro that process. 225, well, the quickest way back to the x-axis would be to get to 180. So the fastest way back to 180 is a 45 degree angle. That's step one. And what we learned from the, from the last video is that sine of 45 degrees is root two over two. Well, 225 degrees is gonna fall in quadrant three. 225 degrees, I'll use the pointer, is gonna come out here, right here. So I'm in quadrant three, and the only thing that's positive in quadrant three is tangent, right? All students take calculus. So if the only thing that's positive in quadrant three is tangent, then sine of 225 is gonna be negative root two over two. Just move this down, whoops. Same logic for cosine and tangent. Cosine of 225 is gonna work like cosine of 45, but again, tangent is the only thing positive in quadrant three, so this is gonna be negative cosine of 45, so I get negative root two over two, again. And tangent works the same way. Tangent 225, well, we know that tangent of 45 is one, and we know that tangent of any angle is positive in quadrant three. So tangent 225 is one. So that's, that's the process. Find the alpha, find the reference angle, find the trig value at that reference angle and adjust your sign. Let's think a little bit in reverse now with one more problem. Cosine is one half, tangent is negative. I wanna find the angle and I wanna find sine of theta. Cosine is positive one half. So cosine is positive and tangent is negative. So the only place where cosine is positive and tangent is negative, right, based on all students take calculus, would be here in quadrant four. So this tells me I'm in quadrant four. So we're kind of working backwards now, right? This is step three from before. And now we're going to do step two. So cosine, let's just find the reference angle first. And from what we learned in the first part of this video, the first video in this part of 6.3, an angle of 60 degrees gives me a cosine of one half. So the reference angle is 60 degrees. So I want the reference angle of 60 degrees that falls in quadrant four. So if the angle, the fastest way back to the x-axis is 60 degrees. So how far did I go from the x-axis all the way around? Well, it's gonna be 360 degrees minus the 60 degrees, right? So my angle is 300 degrees. And then I want to find sine of that angle, sine of 300 degrees. Well, now we're just going to follow our process in the normal order. This is going to be similar to sine of 60 degrees, and we know that sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. Oops. But I know that quadrant 4 means that sine is negative. So sine of 300 is negative root three over two. So kind of working forwards and backwards with this trick, with this process, just to start to tie pieces together.